love us so much that you always have a message for us. And I thank you that you have prepared Dardayan for this Sunday, that you give him this message. And we trust this message is good for us because you're a good God. And we want to receive from you. We are your people. You're our Father. We bless Dardayan. We bless our gathering in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Peace of Christ with all of you, brothers and sisters. Uh, once again, it's a, it's a joy to worship our Lord every Sunday together. Uh, as, as the pastor said, we continue uh, in the book of Luke, uh, and today we'll be in chapter 13. And if you have read chapter 13, there, there are a lot of things happening in here. Uh, as Jesus is, is, is calling, you know, people to repent, or otherwise they're, they're going to be perished. And Jesus heals a crippled woman, and uh, Jesus shares about the narrow door, the famous text that we many times share from. And Jesus is crying out for Jerusalem. He has sorrow and uh, a burden for Jerusalem as he sees the situation. And uh, I uh, empathize so many times with that because I, I so many times when I pray over Scopia, I, I just have so much sorrow and, and cry out for Scopia. But in the midst of all these different things that are happening in the chapter, I really felt to share, and as the Lord was speaking to me, I really felt to share from a hidden part in the whole chapter, you know, like a, a tiny little part in there, which uh, are two parables that Jesus is sharing, and uh, verses from 18 to 21, the parable of the mustard seed and of the yeast. So if you please, uh, if you can open your Bibles there as we read the Word of God and the text that um, we, have, we have today. The word says, Then Jesus asked, What is the kingdom of God like? What shall, shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and it became a tree, and the birds of the air perched in its branches. Again he asked, What, should I, what, what should I, shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. I think even as this text may be being a, 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 small, a small portion of it and hidden somewhere there, and these and this two parables, I think we, we have heard that. We, we have heard maybe these parables many times. Uh, and I really felt from the Lord to share from this part. Uh, of this chapter, and as, as the Lord was, was speaking to me as well. I think it's relevant to uh, where we are maybe as a church, and it's relevant maybe in the midst of all the things uh, that we're going through maybe um, as, as a time, as a country, but maybe it's going to speak to some individuals, to some of us maybe even deeper, as it has actually spoken to me as well. The first thing I want to share, and the Lord was, was talking to me, is don't underestimate the little things. Don't underestimate the little things. And I think Jesus taught, taught us that through his life, and he taught us that through all of his teachings, to not underestimate the little things. God doesn't underestimate the little things. He doesn't uh, 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 under, uh, underestimate the little things that maybe th they might be people, when sometimes uh, people might seem small in the eyes of other people or they're treated like that. God sees them as precious. God sees something great in them. And he himself even said, I mean, he said that he chose. He chose the weak things and the broken things so he could actually shame those who think that are strong and wise and so forth. So I, I think this is an encouragement that comes to us once again to not underestimate the little things. Christ himself is comparing the, the kingdom of God. So one of the parables he's giving, the kingdom of God, he is comparing it with, uh, with, with two small things, very, very small things. If... I, I, I don't know about you, probably we've mentioned it many times, but I don't know if you have ever seen a mustard seed. 
I think it's very interesting like, to actually even see it because we talk a lot and have faith like a mustard seed and you know like the mustard seed is so small and it becomes so big but it's so interesting when you actually see it it's like as small as it gets seed wise if you plant something it's incredible it's one of the smallest seeds out there but then it becomes one of the greatest trees out there so this small thing becomes so big so what what what, what jesus is trying to say is when the small things are, are, are underestimated, Christ is seeing already what those small things can be. So when, 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 when you are maybe underestimating your seven situations or when other people are doing that or when you're doing small gestures, you know, or you're, you're serving in little ways, you're being faithful in little ways, and it doesn't seem much. It seems like, whoa, what am I doing? Maybe this is not so important. Maybe this is, and we start comparing different roles. Maybe it's not more that important like that other thing. Or maybe I'm not that important like that person. Christ is saying, I see you and my kingdom grows like the little things. My kingdom grows in what, in not in what appears at the moment, but in what I have envisioned and in what I see. That's how my kingdom grows. So when we see this little seed, we don't see much. When we see the master seed, if you see it, you can even have a, a, a jar full of, full of them. I mean, it doesn't seem much. But what Christ sees, he sees a tree. He sees a huge tree, a very big tree that the master seed will become. And the birds of the air will actually use it as their house, as their refuge. It's going to become, it's going to become so big. And I think, um, I think Os Guinness put it very well. He said, uh, Jesus made clear that the kingdom of God is organic and not organizational. It grows like a seed and it works like leaven, secretly, invis in invisibly, surprisingly, and irresistibly. He put it very, very well. That doesn't mean, he's not saying he's focusing on one side of the coin. He's not saying we don't need organization and we don't need structure. We, we need that. We need order. He's talking the side of the organizational. But he's saying that this is organic. This is something that the Spirit does. And when the Spirit does something, it's incredible. When God does something, it's incredible. When you see the little things, don't get discouraged, my brothers and sisters. As we as well, in the time of pandemic and a time of moving from so many friends of ours that have left, and as a time of a new chapter, with, uh, with, uh, with a new chapter that we're starting, and we as well bless uh, Pastor Marino and his family as, 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 as we are starting a new chapter of of growth and a new chapter of this year in the midst of pandemics and, and many things that has happened for so many people uh, moving away. Let us see ourselves. Let us see this beautiful group that we are here. Let us see as well in the context of ICS and envision a bigger tree. Envision what God has for us for this year and what ha God has for us for the years to come. For us as a family of ICS, and as well for Macedonia and for the nations. Amen? Amen? Can we just like envision with the eyes of the faith and ask Jesus, give me your eyes. I want to see the tree and the process of the tree and not get discouraged only from the seed. But we, we have a part in it, as we're going to see in, uh, in, 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 in the second parable, as I focus on the first point. The, the second parable talks about uh, the yeast. So in this, in, in this uh, context, Jesus is using it in a good way, in a good context. Don't get confused when he uses the East, speaking about the influence of the Pharisees, you know, the negative influence of other teachings and so forth. So here it's in a positive context on the impact that the East gives to the Tao, to the bread. So we know, I mean, obviously even us which don't, which don't cook, everybody knows this. So the, the yeast gives growth to the Tao, makes it grow. And then we can have bread or whatever, whatever we are cooking. The same thing in here is 
the union of every particle of the flower. Look how it puts actually in uh, in, in in my translation. It says. Uh, Mix it into a large amount of flour, so mixing the, the yeast into a, lar a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. So the yeast worked all through the dough. So if you can imagine this parable and put it in the spiritual context, so we, every individual in the kingdom of God, us as individuals and then as a local church, compared to all the other churches into the kingdom of God, we are as every single particle, every single particle of the flour. So this is all mixed and we are all intertwining together. So the yeast helps us and makes us grow all together for the same purpose, for the same goal. All together in an equal way for the same goal, for the kingdom of God, for the glory of God. And now in the kingdom of God and as every particle of the flower, obviously we have different roles, we have different giftings. But into the kingdom of God for the growth that the East gives us and for the purposes that God has, this East that grows into the kingdom of God, we are all equal before the eyes of God. In value and in how He sees us and loves us. And He wants to unite us in a way that He can use us as one for the purposes of His glory. I mean, after you have the Tao, it doesn't get more one than that. That's a doubt, but it is really mixed well. And I mean, r rarely, Biliana can confirm that, but rarely I make pizza sometimes. You know, I love pizzas, but when I actually make the doubt, you know, I, 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 I beat it up a lot, you know, and it's just like, you know, so much work into it. And there is no more flour. It just says the, the, the yeast has dispersed everywhere. So that's what's trying Jesus to say. It goes everywhere. But he is sharing that the yeast gives growth. Let us not underestimate the little things. Even when they are done secretly, invisibly, at our home with a simple gesture, at a simple gesture with our neighbor or with a stranger that no one sees, or I, I, I don't know how that might reflect in our daily life. But let us not uh, underestimate those things. That's how the kingdom of God grows. And when people don't see it or when people maybe don't give us the appreciation, that's okay. Jesus gives the growth and Jesus gives the appreciation. He gives the growth through those gestures. So brothers and sisters, let us be East. Let us be East that gives our contribution the gift of growth wherever we are. It seems a little thing out there, but it's going to make a big growth and a big impact. The second thing I want to focus on, uh, particularly more in the context of the seed, but as well in the East, and maybe this is like the meat in the sandwich, and uh, it's, a, it's a bit deeper in a way, and it has to go deeper. Some things have to go deeper, deeper in us. Now, for a tree to become very big, has to have very big roots, has to go first deep into the ground, and then it's going to go high in the sky. So the second point God was really speaking to me through this text was about dying to ourselves. Dying ourselves. Now we don't see that, you say, how, 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 how is that here? Where, 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 where is that? But I think for the kingdom of God to have growth, for to have growth in us and through us and in the kingdom overall, we have to die to ourselves. Do you know what happens to the seed when it goes into the ground? The seed dies. If it doesn't die, it can never become the, tr the tree that we envision and we need to, 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 to have, or any plant for, for that matter, as we're speaking. And, 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 and that, is where, that is where the power of God, faith in God, the power in the Holy Spirit comes to play. 
Because everything that we do, brothers and sisters, even though small things or big things, however they, they might look like, if they don't have the power of God, they will not grow. Brothers and sisters, God is our water and He is our sun. He is our everything. He is our air. He is every element that we need to make us grow individually as families and as well as His kingdom. We need Him. He is the most indis indispensable elements that, that we need for our growth as a seed needs the water and, and, and the sun and the air and, and all the elements that actually give life and growth to the seed and, and after to the plant. We need that. So God is that. So our gestures, gospel preaching, every, every gesture we might do in, in, in deeds and words, without the power of God, without the presence of God, without the Holy Spirit in it, it cannot grow as God intends. It will not have the impact and growth that God intends. Only God makes things grow as they grow. But the seed to, to come to life has to die to itself. For Christ to give us birth, He had to die. He died and He was risen again. He was risen again the third day. As a seed dies and in, in, that, in that time and in that period, the farmer should just trust and put his faith. Nothing he can do about it now. He can do some certain things and, you know, try to take care of that, uh, of that seed. But the, there are those forces that I mentioned that are out of the control of the farmer. And same for, for our lives as well and for the kingdom of God. So at times... At times when it, see, it seems that, you know, it's, 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 it's hard for us or, you know, we, 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 try, we, we try to negotiate with God or we try to avoid some certain things. But in our Christian life, brothers and sisters, it's unavoidable. We cannot avoid it. We need to die to ourselves. We need to die to ourselves and to the seeds that we plant, to the plants that we have, so that the plants of God... And the seed of God for His kingdom can grow and bear fruits. We have to die into the cross of Calvary so that we can rise again with Christ. We have to die with Him to our passions and desires and to our compromise to this world and to all the things that try to take us and our hearts. We have to die to those things that we might have life and flourish into the hands of God, into the guidance of the Holy Spirit. For the plans that he has for his kingdom through our, through our life. But we have to die. And at those times, it seems hard and painful. It's very painful to die to ourselves. To die to our selfishness and to die to our ego. And to die to the many things that we struggle with. It's hard to die to those things. But without dying to those things, we cannot experience the power, the growth, and the fruits that God intends into our lives. Brothers and sisters, it doesn't seem that appealing, but this is the word of God as it calls to so many other scriptures. Let us die to ourselves and let God grow his kingdom through us as we surrender, as we say, here I am. I'm going into unknown, trusting you, Lord. The seed is going into the ground. I mean... What, what kind of logic is that? What kind of system? You know, the, the logical system, like, how is this thing going to grow? Like, what's going to happen? How it dies and then it comes like, it's going to give life or something. I mean, it's going to be covered with earth. It has no sun over there. Like, how does it all that work? Well, it works. Just trust all those things to Christ. And I know biologists and all other people can give you every detail. I know some stuff, but they can give you every detail, every, every element, how it works. But the point is, trust those things to God. Trust those things to God. And Rick Warren, Rick Warren said, he said, There is no growth without change. And no change without fear or loss. And no loss without pain. So in this process of surrendering and dying, as, as the seed it happens, and as the yeast it's immersed and mixed 
with a flower and water and, and it's losing in a way. It feels like it's losing itself. It's giving itself up for the common good that then the Tao can grow and, and it can become a Tao so uh, it can produce what it was intended to. It's, it's, it's not easy. But there is no growth without change and no change without fear of loss or loss. We have that fear, we have that loss. But there is no loss without pain. So it's painful as I was saying, but it's so much worth it. So as we are in this process and into the unknown for this year, individually as a church, corporately as part of the kingdom of God, let us trust Him what He has. As we die to ourselves of some things, let us trust what God will give life and will make it grow. And the third thing, I did mention this, but the third thing that strongly fell from the Lord, and I, I, I mentioned this previously, as I said, God make things grow. God makes things grow. It's Him who makes everything grow. Jesus said this, Paul understood this, the apostles understood this, so many people have understood this throughout the history of time. To understand that this is not because of us or from us. God in His goodness and in His grace and in His mercy. He uses us in His kingdom for His purposes. But to understand that this is all about God and this is all from Him as we're singing. Without the power of God, without the help of our Lord, without the reliance in Him, we cannot do anything. Yeah. We can sing with Paul, I can do all things. But we can sing with him by saying, through Christ who strengthens us. Without Christ that gives us strength, without the power of God, these things cannot happen. This process of the yeast giving the Tao growth and of the mustard seed becoming into a great tree. These things cannot happen in the spiritual context, into the kingdom of God. These things cannot happen in our life, throughout our life, and in different circumstances of our life, if God doesn't make them grow. The touch of God into our lives. Soli Deo Gloria, it was set for so many centuries, to God alone, all glory. We give the glory to Him because the people knew that it was all about God. And yeah, the text here, Jesus is giving the parables about the kingdom of God and how that it looks. But I cannot stay, I, I, I cannot stay without saying that it's all about Jesus. It's all about our King Jesus. Because what is a kingdom without a king? And our king is the best. Our king is the glorious king, Jesus Christ. I mean, the kingdom of God, wherever it is, and however it manifests itself, itself in heaven and on earth, and as it develops and so forth, and as it grows in us and through us and in, in, many, spheres, in many spheres of life, it's all about the king, though. When, when we don't see the kingdom of God somewhere, at least with, with our eyes to see it, it's because maybe Jesus is not there. That's why we need to proclaim Jesus everywhere. Where Jesus is, His kingdom is. And I, I know I've said this many times, and I don't want to repeat things, but uh, I, I cannot say without saying it. The, the reason why I want to be in heaven is because Jesus is there. Jesus, the king of that kingdom that He spoke about, he is there as the king of that kingdom for the whole eternity. The main reason, number one reason, more than any, anything else why I want to be to heaven, is because Jesus Christ is there. That's the difference between our kingdom and our faith, between, every, between any other faith. Because a lot of other faith, faiths, they want to go to heaven because they want to escape hell, or, you know, because it's nice there, or, you know, like... <laughs> the house that Christ has prepared, or you know, like it's it's so beautiful and so forth, and like a long list of reasons. And some of those things definitely, and we'll enjoy them, and they're good things. 
But the top reason that we have as the people of Christ, as the people of God, is because Christ is the king of the kingdom. He is the one who put this whole system into place. Without him and without his sacrifice, we wouldn't be here at all. There wouldn't have been no way. There wouldn't have been a bridge. There wouldn't have been a reconciliation with us and the Father. And there wouldn't be this concept that we're speaking about. Christ is the way. He is the way to this kingdom. He is the king who makes all things possible. And as we come to a close, into a different context, William Law, he said, If you have not chosen the kingdom of God first, it will in the end make no difference what you have chosen instead. That's why us individually and us as a church of ICS, we want to choose the kingdom of God. We want to choose Jesus Christ as the king of this kingdom. We want to surrender ourselves into this great king and into this great kingdom to the plans that he has. Let people laugh at us at times. I mean, haven't we seen that throughout history? Didn't the devil and the Romans and a whole bunch of people and a lot of the Pharisees thought that they had won over that battle that they had and killed Christ and everything was finished? It was over. He was dead. Well, we know he came back from the dead. He rose again the third day and the rest is history. And it's more than history. And as we see that into our lives over and over again. Brothers and sisters. What a joy to be part of this kingdom. What a joy to be part of the church of God. And what a joy to have Jesus as our king. Let us pray. Glorious Father. We thank you for Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior and our Lord and our King, who redeemed us and saved us. And through his grace and his mercy, we are reconciled to you. God, thank you that in your plans, you individually chose each one of us. You called us by name, as Pastor Marino re read the psalm earlier, that you know every star by name. You call them by name. And if you know the stars, you know us even more. You knew us before we were formed and you created. In our mother's womb, you knew us. You have plans for us. Individually and as ICS as a family. And you have plans for your kingdom here on earth. And Lord we say. May your will be done. May your kingdom come. On earth as it is in heaven. And Lord we want to be part of your plans. Individually working us deep God. As we die to ourselves. As we surrendered as a mustard seed. Trusting you Lord. Even when it looks hard and it looks dark. And it looks into the unknown. We trust you into your plans. Because yeah. We might cry in the evening. But joy it's coming in the morning. And as we plan with tears. We will cry out with joy in the morning. The sun will rise. Jesus Christ, our sun, our light. He is our air. He is our everything. Lord, I pray that you use us into the small things. That they will become big into your hands. As that little boy that in his great faith, he surrendered his lunch. And he gave two fish and five breasts to you. And you multiplied it and you fed 5,000 people and more. Lord, we want to give our little things. We want to give all that we are, even if it might seem little. Lord, we want to surrender into your hands. We want to die to ourselves. And we want to trust you that makes all things grow. Soli Deo Gloria, only to you, O Lord. All glory belongs. We surrender to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.